Hey guys, so I have Jackery Explorer 1000 in front of me here. A few weeks ago, I did a review and overview of this device. You know, it, it turns out that video itself was not too overly popular. However, a few people did ask if they can see the inside of this device, and that's something I hadn't covered in the original video. In particular, you guys were interested in seeing the batteries and what kind of batteries this uses. So what I thought we would do today is take as much of this apart as we can and see if we can get any details on the batteries that are inside and how they're built. So the first thing I want to do is start by removing the four hex bolts that hold on these orange plates on both sides. And I have not taken this apart yet, so I do apologize for the occasional stumble that may occur. It should be noted too that you don't want to go disassembling your Jackery. Uh, it does have a very nice warranty and disassembling it is going to void that warranty. Additionally, there are components inside with high voltages which could be uh, dangerous if you come in contact with them. So. Looks like there's a couple tabs just holding on this cover plate. And in there we can see some of the cells already. They are 18650 cells. And it does appear they are BAK brand. So after the orange screws are removed, there are three screws on the bottom, two in the middle, and then three more on the top. And for the screws in the middle here, you're going to need a very long number two bit because they are pretty far in there and my screwdriver itself won't reach the whole way back. All right, so with all of those screws out, it does feel like it wants to pull apart, but I guess we gotta cut this label here, which is covering the seam. Just, uh, just that. And then I'm guessing there will also be some screws under these feet since I don't see any other ones and it is still stuck together. Oh yeah, oh, there's a couple of them under there, look at that. So there's one fairly lengthy bolt and then one smaller bolt. And we'll have to remember, so we can put this back together, that the longer bolt goes towards the outside of the enclosure. Ah, there we go. So that short bolt was going into this steel bar which goes across the bottom of the enclosure. Then the longer bolt was going through the steel bar into this nut plate that's on the battery pack itself. Just want to do a general safety reminder that this is an inverter circuit in here. You know, there are capacitors, very high voltages. So, so before I decided to do this, I did a full discharge of this Jackery to ensure the state of charge of these batteries is as low as possible. But I know there is still voltage here, obviously, and there is high current potential. So you need to keep that in mind when you're working on something like this. So next I see there are two large bolts here which appear to be holding in this battery pack and inverter module, so we'll remove these next. And those bolts are all the same size, but interestingly they have some very fine threads. So this assembly is still not sliding out. I think there may be more screws under each of these feet, similarly to how two were going through into the battery pack up here. And with those screws out, let's see if we can separate this again. There we go. See there is an XT60 here. We'll disconnect that guy first. And then here we have a five pin connector which goes to the front board. And this is the AC output. So these are going to the three receptacles on the front. So push this in and pull up. It's important not to mix these up because they are not color coded correctly. The red lead is going to the line and the black lead is going to the neutral. So now we'll set this aside for a minute. So on the front part of the enclosure, there are several Phillips screws holding the PCB in place. I'll pull those out as well so we can have a look at the board. And I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot of what I'm looking at here, but uh, this is the barrel input for the solar panels. We have the cigarette lighter plug or accessory port, whatever you want to call it. The two older style USBs appear to be individually controlled, which makes sense considering one was quick charge and one was not. And there appears to be a single chip to control both of the USB-C ports. And then we have the main DC input to the board, which is an XT60 plug. And many of the pinouts are labeled on here, but again, I'm not really too sure what I'm looking at. So here is the power pole for the front input. And we can see that's connected to the circuit board with an XT30 connector. Uh, the accessory port is connected with an XT30 as well. And then there's an individual inductor for each of the USBs. Again, not too sure 
So on the inverter battery module, we have two fans on the right, which are blowing air out. And then we have one fan on the left, which is blowing air in. So the airflow is in this direction. Additionally, we have two cables that come up here labeled battery one and battery two. So I'm not sure if there are two batteries in here or if these leads are just doubled up to increase the opacity. And on the other side, we can see a very large electrolytic capacitor as well as the MOSFETs used for converting the DC into AC power. I see there is a temperature sensor bolted onto this heatsink, which is great for thermal. There's also, there's also another temperature sensor down in here on this heatsink. And there's nothing else really too exciting to see in here other than that. I mean, there's two transformers, two large inductors, a couple relays down there, but uh, that's about it. Interestingly, I do not see any fuses on this board, which I am kind of surprised with. But looking under here, I see there is another board down there. So we will try to take this off, though I admittedly am not sure I want to do that as I don't see any way to disengage this board. Yeah, in order to remove this board, I see there are three screws here and there's three screws over here. Before we do that, let's see what voltage is present on these conductors. So we've got 19.84 and 19.84. All right, so I removed all the mounting screws for this inverter board here, but uh, the fact that this is live and there's no way to disconnect it does make me a bit nervous. So I'm going to remove all four of these Phillips screws with the DC battery input and tape them off just for safety. I also taped up my screwdriver so it's nice and insulated as well to avoid any accidental contact. All right, so with the wires removed and taped off, uh, we can remove this board, but it is important to note that these have very large capacitors on them as I pointed out, so this board is likely still charged. So I'm just going to carefully lift it up and set it on the side, getting closer and closer to the battery pack. So that must be the BMS down there for it. Let's see if we can remove this. I see uh, two input negatives and then I also see two positive. There's a positive here and then there's one up here. Both of these are labeled B plus and there's an arrow pointing from the bottom to the top. So I'm not sure what that indicates in itself. However, it does appear that these two terminals are wired in parallel as are these ones over here. They're bridged together. Uh, so perhaps they just have a lead coming off of each side of the battery pack to equally distribute the load. That is a very cool feature in my opinion and not something you typically see on these types of devices. So on the BMS here, we can see the MOSFETs, which control when this battery is turned on or off. And those come out to the two negative output leads here. And again, it does appear that these two negative leads are connected in parallel, even though we see two, I don't know if these are shunts or fuses here, and then two more over here. Yeah, so this is kind of an interesting design. If any of you guys know what's going on here, please let me know, because I'm interested in knowing as well. And then we only have one set of BMS leads coming up from the battery to the BMS itself. So I guess based on this, we can tell that there is only one battery pack. And then on the back side here, I see one temperature sensor on these two cells that comes up into the bottom of the board. Oh, sorry, there are two more temperature sensors over here as well. And I'm not sure what this is. This pins are labeled slave and host. All right, so I'm going to pull off these two fans on the front here. And then to avoid disconnecting all of this wire, I'm going to place this bracket back on top here and we'll use this for support so we can flip the device upside down and see if we can take a look at the battery pack here. Some plastic just appears to be stuck on. I want to be careful not to damage it because I do want to put this back together. But let's see here. Oh, look at that is beautiful. All right, so we see one, two, three, four, five, six groupings of cells. So this is a 6S configuration, and there are 16 in parallel. And 6S is an interesting setup because normally you see 7S for a 24 volt configuration, but I guess when you're designing your own product, you can do it however you would like. And the quality of this appears to be quite good. So we have the positive terminal here, and you can see there is an insulated disc on the top. Each cell is bot welded down twice with two separate tabs. And I'm guessing this will act as a cell level fuse. So each of these cells is individually fused both on the positive and the negative side. 
And what I find interesting about this design is this is very similar to how Battery Hookup did theirs. A lot of people were complaining about Battery Hookups having, you know, a piece of metal melts and falls off and whatever else when a fuse blows, but this is a professionally done product and this is designed the exact same way. And then at the top of the module here, we can see where each BMS lead is coming off. They're just soldered on directly to the nickel. And these are BAK cells. And looking at this one, we can see this is an N18650 CL-29. So I don't have the spec sheet on hand uh, right at this moment, but um, I'm guessing the dash 29 indicates these are 2900 milliamp hour cells. I will check and verify that once I complete this video and see what information I can find. So yeah, for those guys who are interested in seeing the battery pack, I am quite impressed with how this thing is designed. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know what you think of these cells and the way this is fused and everything like that. I'm going to go ahead and put this cover plate back on and start putting it back together, I guess. I just noticed too, as I'm working with this and talking about it, these two wires coming off of the slave and host pins on the BMS are coming over to this conductor which was plugged into the main board itself. So I guess that's the way for the BMS to communicate with the jackery itself. And taking a look at how they have the main wires connected in here, uh, they have a piece of the nickel or whatever material it is folded back. So one lead is connected on the top through solder and it's connected directly to the lead on the bottom through solder. So it is done like that to facilitate uh, balancing the load across the battery pack, which is very cool in my opinion. Uh, a couple things that came to mind as I am putting this pack together. I did not point out that these are 10 gauge uh, silicone cables that are feeding the battery. So we have dual 10 gauge wires, which can supply quite a bit of current. The second thing was that I don't see any fuses anywhere on this board, this inverter board, or the BMS board itself. The only thing I saw were those two copper-like things uh, soldered onto the board, which is questionable as to whether or not those were shunting resistors uh, or those were actually fuses. So perhaps they're relying on the cell level fuses of the battery bank itself should there be a short current. But uh, And one thing I noticed too is that anytime one of these wires passes over where this heat sink is, they have a nice piece of heat shrink tube um, just to provide some extra protection and insulation. All right, so the reassembly is complete and hopefully if we did everything correctly, it will turn on and it does get AC and DC. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think, especially around how those batteries were put together and that fusing was quite interesting the way they had them all strapped together. If you like this video, please hit that like button down below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one where I take things apart and just kind of show you what's inside, please let me know that as well. It really helps me to know what kind of videos you guys want to see. That way I'm publishing content that is interesting and that way I'm not wasting my time making videos of things that are not interesting because it does take hours and hours and hours to put together one of these videos and edit it. Anyway, rambling aside, hit that like button and thanks for watching.